Number 27. Using energy considerations and assuming negligible air resistance, show that a rock thrown from a bridge 20 meters above the water with an initial speed of 15 meters per second strikes the water with a speed of 24.8 meters per second independent of the direction thrown. All right. So it says from energy considerations, so we are thinking in terms of kinetics, right? Kinetic energy and potential energy. So those formulas are over here on the right-hand side. All right, so we're definitely going to be using these guys. And I also want to keep in mind uh, that the energies in this problem will be balanced, right? There's negligible air resistance. There's no friction of any sort. And therefore, I can start with a general equation, right? That says that the initial energy of this particular system will equal the final energy, all right, of this particular system. So initially, what's going on? Well, initially, um, the rock is being thrown with an initial speed of 15 meters per second. Now, we don't know which way it's going. It might be going that way. It might be going this way. It might be going straight, whatever. It might be going straight down. But we just know it's traveling at 15 meters per second. All right, so let me just, I'm just going to draw a vector this way. It doesn't matter which way you draw it, um, but we'll draw it this way. All right. So that's 15 meters per second. So this is the initial velocity, right? That should make sense. Now, at the initial point, so this is the initial point, right? And the rock would have a trajectory now of something that might look like that, right? And at this initial point here, uh, realize that the ball, oh, excuse me, the rock is uh, 20 meters above the water. And therefore, not only does this rock have kinetic energy, right? Because it's in motion, but it will also have potential energy, okay? Because it is a height above the ground, at a height above the ground. So now in expanding the initial energy, right, I now know that I will have some type of initial kinetic energy and some initial potential energy, okay? And that will now equal, right, the final energy of the system. Now remember, uh, after the rock comes down here, right, and hits the water, all right, all the potential energy is gone. Why? Because there's no height associated with it. Okay, I could have put potential energy final here, and then when I look at the height, I could have plugged in a zero. That's, I mean, you could do that, sure. But I'm just kind of thinking about it so I don't have to waste my time doing that, right? And I'm just realizing that it's all going to be kinetic here. So all I have is kinetic energy final. So now, uh, basically what we need to do is uh, expand these variables now, given their formulas over here. So let's do that. So initial kinetic energy. So we have one half m initial velocity squared plus mgh initial, right, will equal uh, kinetic energy final, which is one half mvf squared. Okay. Now notice all of these terms have the mass in common. All right. So we can cancel the mass then. All right. Uh, the way to do that would be to factor out an m here. So this would these both would cancel and you bring the m out there, right? Uh, you can also do the same thing here, bring the m out. If you wanted to see it a little more clearly, bring the m out there. And then you divide this side by m and that side by m as well, and they all go bye-bye, all right? But instead of cluttering that you know, up too much here, um, I'm just going to rewrite this without the mass. So one half initial velocity squared uh, plus g times the initial height will equal uh, one half uh, VF squared. Okay, so now basically what I need to know is I need to find the final velocity, okay? And um, I know the initial, right? There's 15 meters per second. And I know the height of 20 meters. All right, so I can basically just plug it on in. Now, when you do problems from an energy perspective like this, you do not care whether this velocity vector is in the x or the y or whatever, it's kind of nice, right? That was part of the difficulty of kinematics, right? Thinking about, well, what frame am I in, x frame, y frame, all this. When you do it from an energy perspective, you don't have to worry about any of that, all right? So that's the beauty. So here, let's plug in now the initial velocity was 15, right? Actually, you know what? Before I plug in the numbers, let me just solve this thing for uh, vf, okay? So I would divide this out by half, right? I divide this side out by half. Okay, that would cancel the half here, right? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase that just so I can save a little space. All right, that would go, that would cancel. And then I would have to take the square root of both sides, right? And when I take the square root of a squared term, remember it gets rid of the square. All right, so I'm just left with the um, final velocity here. All right, so now what we're going to do is now I'm going to plug everything in. Okay, so this is the solved equation now. So this would be 1 half times now 15. That's the initial velocity squared plus 9.80. That's G, right? The initial height was 20 meters. Again, no signs necessary here. And then, excuse me, all divided by 1 half. All right, and that will be equal to the final velocity. So let's see what this works out to be. So square root of 0.5 times 15 squared and then we have plus 9.8 times 20 and that all divided by 0.5 we get a value of look at that 24.8 beautiful right 24.8 and that works out to be meters per second all right so there it is that all checks out now for those of you who might be curious as to how this works or why this works, join me on a little adventure, all right? A little mathematical adventure. Uh, so why don't I do this? Um, I'm basically gonna take it right from here, okay? I'm gonna take it right from there and uh, watch. So we have one half M, excuse me. Let me take it actually from here without the masses though, okay? Remember the mass is canceled. So we have one half initial velocity squared plus GH, right, is equal to uh, one half VF squared. Now, I'm just gonna do a little, a little algebra here. I'm gonna subtract the GH from the left-hand side, bring it over to the right-hand side, and then I'm gonna subtract the one half VF squared from the right, and then bring it on over to the left, okay? So this will cancel, this will cancel, and that will now leave me with, one half initial velocity squared minus one half final velocity squared. All right, and that will now equal negative GH. Okay, now let's factor out a half from both of these, right? So if I factor out the half, right, I bring the half out here now. Okay, so what I can do is I can get rid of both of the halves here, right? And when I do that now, and I wanna get rid of the half, Okay, I then have to divide this side by half to get rid of it, correct? And then I would also divide this side by half as well. All right, so then what happens as a result? Well, what happens as a result will be now, I'm just left with this term on the right-hand side, right? So let me just backtrack because I'm running out of space. All right. So now I'm left with the initial velocity squared minus the final velocity squared. Right? And that will equal, remember, I had to divide this side by half then. Right? So dividing something by half is the same as multiplying it by 2. Therefore, I can rewrite this as negative 2gh. Okay? And now, watch closely. So here, watch what this turns out to be. So now I'm going to bring this term back over to the right-hand side. So I'm going to add this term. I'm going to add this term from the left to the right. Okay, from the left to the right. And let's see what we get. So I'm going to go up to the top just because I'm running out of space. So it's going to work out to now be initial velocity squared is equal to final velocity squared minus 2gh. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look familiar? That looks very familiar. Doesn't that look very, fam uh, very similar to this? Right? Something like that. It looks very close. It is the same thing. All right. The reason why the negative sign though is in here is because in the formula we're using G. And G is just 9.80, but G is the right acceleration due to gravity, uh, which is negative, but we're just incorporating the negative here. Whereas in this equation, I would have plugged in negative 9.80 for A. But again, I would have, you know, you can just distribute the negative to the front. All right. And that would have been the same. But notice, that's your equation of kinematics. I mean, it literally comes from the equations of energy. All right, so you can now hopefully see a little, uh, maybe 
more clearly that, you know, these energy considerations and kinematics are intimately mathematically intertwined. All right. So anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next problem. Take care.